G'day kids, thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Aussie here. Now we've come along today to Canberra Reptile Zoo. This place is amazing. They've got lizards, frogs, turtles, crocodiles, and some of the most venomous snakes in the whole world. Now I can't wait to sink my fangs into this one. So come on kids, let's get inside and get stuck in. So here we are kids, we're at Canberra Reptile Zoo and Hi. I've just found Pete. Pete uh, runs the place here, thank you so much for having That's us. Alright, how are you going? How are you going very guys? good. Now I believe you're the man to speak to when it comes to <laughs> reptiles, so sure. why don't you take us on a little tour yep. and you can show us some of the amazing yep. uh, reptiles you Always happy to show off my little creatures, I love these guys very much and okay. uh, you can talk to them if you like but they're not very good at answering so <laughs> I'll, I'll do it for them. Awesome. Okay? Alright, so um, where should we start Pete? Well look, there's no doubt, I know you've just come in, I think maybe we should go back out again because one of my favourite creatures is just out here. Okay, yeah. cool. Now I know you're not supposed to have favourites when you've got children, I right. do love all my animals equally. <laughs> uh, but I do definitely have a soft spot for these little creatures out here. Okay, and what so, have we got here? Okay, so what we've got here is uh, a, a goanna or monitor called a lace monitor. If we head on in here, this one you can come in with, it's wow. pretty safe. Straight this into it, kids. Come on through. This guy right here, this is a very special little creature. This one, this is Minion. We call this one Minion. So Minion here is one of our tame lace monitors. Oh, very, wow. very beautiful creature this one. You see really that? Beautiful looking yeah, creature. Yeah, it's got some amazing markings. So most uh, lace monitors are much darker in colour. You'll see some of the bigger ones floating around here behind me in this outdoor display. This like, guy over here, Romeo. Wow. So this is their colour normally in the wild. This one here is called a Bell's Face, a particularly special one. Not only that, this one is also very friendly. As you can see, give you a nice big kiss. Mm, there you go. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this monitor here is uh, very special kids. I don't think I would be going around picking up goannas and trying to kiss them in the wild. Uh, this creature right here is one of our much loved pets uh, that we use uh, here at the Reptile Zoo in our birthday parties or to educate people. Fantastic. So he is very used to being handled. Yeah. We do spend quite a bit of time with him and uh, and he's just chilling out here at the he moment. He certainly is. He's giving you a cuddle yeah. right there, Yeah, Pete. he is. Now, he's, he, looks, he looks rough to touch. Can I have a little yeah, touch? Yeah, by all means. Have a feel. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's got a very coarse skin. It almost feels um, textured like canvas. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the interesting thing is, um, with monitors, what I find so fascinating is they do have incredible eyesight, awesome sense of smell. Now, they do have a pretty sharp, sharp set of teeth on them. Okay. So if they were going to bite you, it would be nasty. Yeah. So, uh, but the claws are almost as bad as their teeth. Now, we yeah, trim wow. our, yeah. these go in as we handle, so we trim their claws to, okay. otherwise you'd be tearing my shirt up right <laughs> yeah. now. But what's incredible about these guys, probably the most dangerous part of their body, is this hand right here. Yeah, it's pretty long. So this is their tail, which is actually ridged, and if you can feel that's quite spiky on top. Oh yeah, yeah, it is actually. So what these guys do when they get upset, you can tell, because their tail curls up into a ball, and they just thrash it out and hit something. Whip it out. Yeah, and normally it's defensive, so they'll actually hit something as they run, and they're so smart, they'll even aim for your eyes. Wow. So they'll, you know, if they don't like what you're doing, they'll eat too close, they'll curl up and boom, they'll throw that tail at your face, yep. and then run in the other direction. <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah. stick clear of these guys in, in the wild. Uh, look, I think it would be very advisable. Um, I do love this one, and the ones behind me are fairly tame. Most of our animals are actually uh, very used to human contact, right. but even I won't approach these guys in the wild because they are a, a pretty incredible, a, a dangerous animal with their cornered. Yeah, okay. Yeah, All so right. we'll head on back out again. Now visitors to the zoo don't usually get to actually wander into an exhibit. No, I don't But these animals do common. come out. 
So we have a lot of volunteers and people who are really passionate about these animals. Yeah. They come and assist us and they bring these animals out and let members of the public get up close and touch them. We're all about keeping people calm and, and, and um, uh, getting people to understand these creatures better and, and not feel so afraid of them. That's great. But that doesn't mean we encourage people to go out touching them in the wild. No. That's usually a pretty quick way to end a, a holiday. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so if someone did yeah. want to touch um, one of these animals, um, so, uh, with you professionals. can come along on, on the weekend, yeah. is that yeah. right? Yeah, or even into the weekdays okay. anytime. Uh, they just come in and, and if they have a shared interest, we can help them out. We, we are very hands-on here at the Reptile Zoo. Fantastic. Yeah. When it comes to feeding these guys, we do have to feed them individually and be careful because they will coexist together, but when it comes to feed time, they're pretty brutal yeah, even right. with one another. Yeah, mm. yeah, right. So, Survival of the fittest. Yeah, yeah. So if you'd okay. like, we might even give you a chance to watch Ooh, these guys feed if you like. I'd love to. Yeah, we can All do right. that. I reckon yeah, the kids sure. would love that too. What do you reckon, kids? Great. Should we get stuck in? Can do that? All okay, right. Okay, not? Just going to grab my feeding toms. And here we go. So this little guy here, this is Brutus. He's one of our newest monitors. So. These are a family of lizard called monitors. Monitors are uh, also referred to in Australia as a goanna as well. Right. Uh, he's he's a bit funny with that one. You want that? Come on. You got, now you want the whole bucket. Oh, Don't be greedy. Gosh, you take Brutus. the whole bucket. Come on, matey. You can take that or not. No. There, there he goes. goes. Yum, now, yum, yum. Uh, Romeo over here is a little bit less fussy than that. He'll probably take that bit of chicken pretty quickly. There you go, Romeo. Do you want that, buddy? Boom. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, he's hungry. Romeo really. is one of our oldest uh, lace monitors here. What about this little one here? Okay, What's this so parrots name? are a little bit Parrot. slower and that's one of our biggest problems when these guys decide to share food because they do swallow it whole. If they don't uh, don't swallow it quick enough, the bigger guys will take it. Come and take it out of their mouth. Absolutely. All right, so on, how old's Parrot? Um, now Parrot here is actually eight years old now. Okay. Oh, oh, no, not you Brutus. There you go, buddy. Oh, good stuff. Swallow that oh, one. There got a bit there. Not my leg, mate. Uh, now, how old will these guys uh, live to? Uh, now, um, goannas, uh, or mon uh, lace monitors in particular, can live uh, 30 to 40 years. Okay, long time. So yes, they do have a pretty good lifespan on them. Of course, in the wild, a lot of animals don't live that long. When they get older and a little more geriatric, they tend to have trouble finding food and sometimes they fall prey to animals themselves. Yeah, right. Now, lace monitors actually don't have much to worry about. One of the biggest predators these guys need to deal with in Australia would actually be something like an eagle. All right. So a large predatory bird. Okay. We'll eat these guys. Yep. Wowzers. One of the very few uh, animals we have here in Australia big enough to actually give one of these guys a run for their money when they're fully grown. Wow. When they're younger though, like everything else, they're fair game, even with each other. There you go guys. Now starting to slow down a little bit as their, their crop in their neck. So the food's actually sitting just here in this crop. Okay. And then once they're finished grabbing enough food, they'll stop and then you'll watch them kinking their neck and they'll actually start pushing it down into their throat. Okay, so they just swallow it whole. They're not, yes, they they're do. not chomping that no up. No chewing at all. So how does the body break that down inside? So they've got, an, a, like, a bit like a snake, they have a remarkable digestive system and so their um, digestive, digestive juices do a great job of breaking it down quickly. Incredible. But you've got to keep in mind, we also only feed these guys uh, around about once uh, a week during the cooler months, maybe twice a week during the warmer months. Okay. We also tend to mix their food up a little bit as well, giving them different things to eat. They love their eggs. Uh, sometimes they'll actually eat a whole uh, smaller chicken. How lucky are we kids? We got to see these lace monitors being fed chicken wings. Now they didn't smell too good, but it didn't worry these guys. They were straight into it, chomping them down whole. Now I reckon uh, once Pete comes out, we're gonna go and check out some more reptiles. Say hello to Charlie. Charlie, g'day Charlie. Yeah. Nice to meet you, mate. He looks a bit friendly uh, sitting there, nice and placid, but I dare say he's not that friendly. Nah, he's putting that on for you, actually. Okay. What he's trying to do is lull you into a false sense of security. He right. wants you to feel calm and relaxed. I am. He wants you to say, do you know what? That's not so bad. Maybe it's even fake. The number of people that come in here and go, that's not real, when they get really, really close, boom, he moves. Scares the heck out of people. <laughs> it's quite it hilarious, actually. So, but what yeah. a beautiful looking crocodile. Is this it, a saltwater crocodile? Yes, it, it is a saltwater crocodile. Uh, one of the largest species of crocodiles. Uh, well, we got two species in Australia. Okay. This is the big one. Right. Yeah, and he's got a long way to go. 
Probably not even half his adult size yet. Far out. Yeah, so, he's, so uh, Charlie, Charlie's, gonna uh, Charlie's gonna be looking at getting a new home. Here's the newest exhibit we're building at the moment. Fantastic, I yeah. can't wait to come back and see That'd that. Terrific. Come on, let's go around here and have a look. Yes, what else can we see? Okay, so we do have uh, some other animals around here. Um, you might even know this one, a bearded dragon. Bearded is a dragon. very, very, very common animal. A lot of people see these in their homes, actually. Yeah, so very here common a, pet, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah. Here in the ACT, we tend to get these around the gardens and, and places like that. This particular one is a central bearded dragon. We don't get this one in Canberra, okay. uh, but we do get bearded dragons around here. There's uh, about seven different uh, recognised individual species of bearded right. dragons. So these guys are in our open enclosures and what we've done is we've designed these in a way that visitors to the reptile zoo can actually come in and they can interact with these animals. So you can actually so, reach in there and touch them. That's right, them. we have volunteers and staff uh, who are here on display. When yep. you come in, you're welcome to reach over and see what the animals feel like. They're very friendly and very cool. used to being touched. Awesome. Yeah, and that well, way uh, you can get to experience that. Fantastic. Mm. Well, same as what uh, we've got over here in this one here. Uh, we've got this beautiful creature right here is one of our uh, alpine blotched oh, blue tongue lizards. Beautiful, this one is. Yeah, she. She is a gorgeous little creature, this one. Wow. She's amazing. And so how old uh, is this? Oh, now, um, it's a bit hard for me to answer is that it? one with these yeah. guys, because yeah. we have about 18 of these blue <laughs> Fair enough. I'd be making it up if I had to tell you old. Oh, this one, I wasn't okay. too sure. So all we need to know can, is she is can, beautiful. They can live up to 20 years. Though. 20 years, okay. They can, and, and most of our lizards are well and truly would be over the 10 year mark. Now, is this the kind yeah. of blue tongue or similar to what you'd find in your backyard at home? Depends on where you live. So, yeah. um, um, the eastern blue tongue lizard, now let me find a, a good one here for you. Uh, these guys are a bit young. I'm just <laughs> trying to find one that is a decent uh, colouring for you. Hang on, here we go. This is a good one. This isn't a typical eastern blue tongue lizard, this one right here. So this is probably the species that would be most common in okay. Australia. I reckon I've seen some of those just cruising around my backyard. Yes, know. you would. They yeah. are a very, very common animal. Now, Nowhere near as calm as this, mind you. I wouldn't go doing this to the one in your garden. I was going to say, <laughs> you, it's, very, no way. Um, it's very calm in your hands here. Yes. But that's because it's used to this kind of uh, treatment and, and handling. It is. It is. But you wouldn't do this, if you saw one in your, your, your garden at home, you wouldn't go and touch it, would you? No, absolutely not. Okay. Any animal that's wild sees you as a threat. And okay. when animals see you as a threat, that's when they're dangerous. So they'll either bite, they can scratch, or the worst thing they tend to do is a really stinky poo. Basically, oh, they just let go. On you. Bowels and all. And you don't want that. You <laughs> yeah. don't want that. Nope. No, now, you come check that. this one out, kids. This one is actually, oh, he was buried under the bark. Just there, there he is. Oh, but he's just come out. That looked absolutely Our awesome. animals are given the ability to hide away if they don't want to be handled. Yep. Um, we don't encourage people to pick them up when they visit, but yep. they are welcome to come and see what they actually feel like. That's incredible. Yeah, these gorgeous little creatures over here are actually our pig-nosed turtles. Oh, now, if you'll notice, you look in here, turtle. you'll actually see we're teaching <laughs> our animals good manners to eat with a fork, okay? <laughs> Very good. Now, that might seem like really it. odd, but what's actually happening is this particular species of freshwater finned turtle yes. uh, eats fruit. Okay. And if we drop an apple in there, it tends to bob around on the surface and end up in the filtration system. So, so what we do is we pierce a fork into it, we drop the fork in and that sinks the fruit. And you can see a couple of bites taken out of this apple here. Yeah. When he's finished eating it, staff come along and remove the forks. And very then clever. And you put fruit in there. That's very clever. Yeah. And it looks cool. Yeah, and you've got two of them just there, the second one right there. Uh, they're very cool looking uh, turtles. They are. Now these guys actually grow quite large. So when they're fully grown, they can be uh, about the size of, uh, I was going to say garbage bin lid, but most children probably wouldn't know what that is anymore. <laughs> they grow to about this sort of size right here and That's they're quite big. large. That's so big. with our animals here at the Reptile Zoo, we're always looking to the future and where they're going to end up. Yeah. When Charlie gets his new home, these turtles will end up in Charlie's ah. home and they'll have more room to swim. All so right. yeah, we're always thinking ahead. Fantastic. We plan to be That's around really for a long good. time and That's so really do they. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I like these guys. I've never actually seen a pig-nosed turtle before. Yeah. Yeah, they're the only yeah, um, freshwater turtle species that has the, the fins. Okay. Yeah. Now, awesome. uh, along the wall here, we've got a few other different lizard species. So we've got quite a few different lizards here. Yeah. We also have frogs as well. Oh, I so like we've frogs. had a, we've had a great breeding program here with our green and golden bell tree frogs. Uh, now, these guys are actually quite spectacular in certain environments. At the moment, we're trying to get our guys to, to breed for us. It's that time of year. Okay. So it's a, a, a little bit darker in here right now, and so they've gone darker in, re, in response to that. Right. But they when change their skin color. They can. They can go darker or lighter. Yeah, yeah, most okay. frogs can actually do that. Yeah. And are these the different type of frog yes, over here? Yes, this over here is our green tree frog. Green tree frog. Yeah, yeah, and you'll see we've got the big dark green one there and the yeah. lighter green ones. Again, they're like mood rings, so these guys can actually change their color. Um, we have never really been able to pinpoint exactly what stimulates them to change their color, but they can do it on command. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And they actually look like some of them, apart from the fact that they're moving their... Yeah. 
under their chin there, yes. under their mouth, they look like statues. They, they don't do. look real. They do. In fact, um, the thing about a reptile zoo is that most of the time a lot of your animals actually appear to be asleep. Yeah. That's because they are. Cold-blooded animals conserve a lot of energy by lying around and not moving very much. Amphibians are the same as reptiles when it okay. comes to that. So we put a lot of effort into our exhibits and making sure that we have what we call uh, uh, bioactive in exhibits. That's where you've got live plants and running water and you've got bugs in there and you've got yeah. different things moving. So there's a more natural environment for our creatures. That's great. And, and I've noticed that some yeah. of the um, reptiles are coexisting in the, yes, the one are. exhibit. Yeah, some of them are. We can do that. It takes a bit of practice sometimes they don't get on but yeah. we're here as a full-time job so if they don't get on we, we separate them <laughs> this is one of our uh, younger pygmy uh, freshwater crocodiles this guy is just he's got a bit of chicken in his mouth at the moment actually he just had a feed oh, so he's cool. holding some chicken right there now this crocodile this is obviously a temporary exhibit yeah it won't grow very big but it it, uh, it will outgrow this okay yeah yeah great all right we also carry a few common oh sorry when i say common species i mean very popular and this is our Australian frilled lizard or frill awesome. neck lizard. Frill neck lizard. Yeah, frill neck lizards are obviously one of the most iconic lizards in Australia. Yeah. Uh, they have that beautiful big frill. Now, I don't know if you look at it as an advantage or a disadvantage, but uh, they don't really frill their neck in captivity. Okay. So that frill is a threat response. They feel yeah, threatened, right. they're upset, they put that thrill out, they look really dangerous. Yeah. Um, this guy feels totally so calm. You're not likely to see anything. No, you're not. Yeah. The only time that happens is. Which they, is a good thing, right? They, yes. They, they have a genetic reaction to other animals like snakes. So if someone had a snake in this room and he okay. saw it, he'd be like, hey, get that away from me. Okay. So um, they do have that reaction, but generally in captivity, they're pretty easy. Oh, he's out. happy, so he doesn't yeah. need to put his, his frills out. He's quite relaxed there. Awesome. Okay, and there's a few other. Now, this, this enclosure sweeps all around the corner yeah. here. Yeah. So we have this um, tank here full of eastern long-necked turtles. It's got a few turtles. guys in there together. Beautiful turtles. This is a very, guys. very common species here in the ACT. We tend to get a lot of these guys crossing the road during the wet seasons when it's raining. Okay. Um, this is one of our other exhibits where we do actually allow people to oh, interact cool. with the turtles. But we do warn them, they will try to eat your fingers. Yeah, they These guys snap. actually have terrible eyesight and anything that moves is food. The good news is, <laughs> and I'll see if I can show you with this one, hang on, and oh, good news is they don't have any teeth. Oh, so they don't actually <laughs> hurt that much. No, but it does certainly give people a bit of a shock. Oh, I bet it would. I bet <laughs> so it would. We, uh, we do have signs up warning people, and we, again, we do have staff and volunteers. Um, we do say to you, uh, yeah, don't touch them. The other thing we also warn people too, is that after you've touched the turtle, you wash your hands really well, because they are swimming in their toilet. <laughs> yeah, they, they poo where they swim. Correct. Fair enough. We do also have a few other, uh, these are called sleepy lizards or shinglebacks. Wow, they're These cool are very looking. common around this region. They, they prefer drier, less humid areas to live, so we do get a few of them around camera. We always joke about this one because um, they look like their tail and their head are the same. I was going to say, I was just trying to figure out which one is the head, which one's the tail, but you can see the eyes. So we introduced this one here. This is Butthead. Butthead. <laughs> what a great name. <laughs> Butthead. And this is not an unfortunate accident. This is a very deliberate design yeah. which protects these animals from predation. When animals go to eat them, they generally confuse them into working out which end's going to bite. Yep. Works very, very well for an animal that's so armor plated. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's really hard, isn't it? Yes, they are. Yeah. Now, our, uh, our lizards, again, our shinglebacks, like the rest, very calm and easy going. People can actually reach in and touch them. Awesome. Uh, certainly would never do that in the wild. Uh, I, I've never experienced it myself, but I have uh, met, I know someone intimately who has been bitten by one of these, I believe they don't want to repeat that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. so, All right, wild so if animals, you want to touch one of these, yeah. this is the place to be. Absolutely. Place to, this is the place to come. Yep. Do not try and do it in the wild. No, do kids. not. Wild no animals way. have a totally different uh, take on what your fingers are for. Yeah, absolutely. So we can head on down through this hallway here if you like. All right. So we have a few different species of geckos in here as well. Some of these guys take quite a bit of attention to spot. It is also darker because we do what's called reverse light cycle this hallway okay so during the night this hallway is lit up but during the day it's dark and that's to keep these guys active at a time when they would normally be asleep wow yeah so we have a few different types we're also rotating our displays quite regularly as well this is just a, a young um, coastal carpet python All right so we're starting to get into some of the snakes we are so we're raising this guy up big enough to go with the other ones so he's just in here amongst our goannas at the moment oh, get geckos at the moment sorry this interesting little snake right here oh, wow. is actually a brown tree snake. Brown tree snake. Yep. Now what's good is our animals get used to seeing each other and so like with humans, 
they can coexist side by side, whereas in the wild, one would see the other as food. So this particular guy here would love to eat frogs and would absolutely love to eat geckos. They're probably his two main food sources. Yeah. Here in captivity, their boundaries are set. So yep. the gecko is in the enclosure next door and uh, the snake in there, they tend to ignore each other. They, they do ignore each other. Absolutely. So you don't even notice that he's living next door yeah, to his right. uh, yeah. potential food. That's right. This is the room where we carry most of our snake species. So we've got a few uh, venomous snakes in here, which we right. love to show to people. And we've yeah. got a few that but are not venomous. not touch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if you really want to, but no, that's a uh, different show that one, yes. So this is actually a, uh, a, a tree snake. We have a, a gold form and, and blue. So these guys actually look like venomous snakes, but they're not. Okay, they're really skinny. They are, and they're very, very fast. Most snakes are pretty lazy and quite slow, but these yep. guys move really quickly. Okay. Their main food source is actually frogs. Okay, wow, yeah. how do they eat a frog? They don't look too skinny um, to eat a frog. They're not quite fully grown yet, but when okay. they're fully grown, they can actually grow quite large, uh, and they're about right. that round. Uh, and up in places like uh, Northern Australia, Queensland, Quite notorious because if people put their budgerigar in a cage out on the balcony, sometimes these guys will eat small birds and they've been known to get into the cage very quickly, eat that bird and then not be able to get back out oh, again no. because of the lump in their stomach. Oh. So there's a word of warning for you. If you have a budgerigar and you live in Queensland, don't hang it out on the balcony outside, okay? For fear yeah, that it's definitely not. Yes, exactly right. Incredible. Yeah. Um, what we do also have here is another crocodile in this room. Oh, wow. This is actually uh, um, Johnny. Johnny is a uh, pygmy freshwater crocodile. Right, little Johnny. So he's he is as now, big. Is he, is he fully grown? He is as big as he's ever going to grow. That's incredible. Yeah, quite remarkable. Now, a uh, bit hard to see him. There's actually a giant turtle in there at the moment too. We'll oh, see really? We can get him to come out later. He's hiding up under that rock. Now we do a lot of uh, we do have a lot of uh, snake species in here that aren't venomous as well. Right. Because whenever you say the word snake in Australia, they're synonymous with dangerous that's right and not all of them are and in fact some of them are much loved as well right because uh, these are diamond pythons which are found Beautiful. on our south coast yeah now this particular diamond here is soaking in his water bowl because he's getting ready to shed his skin okay it is uh very dry here in canberra it's not their normal environment so we try to mimic it as much as we can okay and sometimes when they go to shed their skin or they want to grow they'll they know what to do themselves. Yeah. So soaking will help. This one here is also just about to shed its skin. I can tell because it's actually quite dull in colour. Right. Yeah. Now when they're not they're not dangerous as such. No, they are not venomous. But as we always say to people, the only way to tell the difference between a venomous and non-venomous species is if it bites you when you die, then it was venomous. Yeah. Well, so I the message really want to test that theory out. Exactly what we're telling people to do. Don't test that theory out. <laughs> the only way to tell the difference is not to. Just avoid them all. Avoid. Unless sense. you're a specialist and you know what you're doing, yep. the best thing to do is to assume. Because even though they're not venomous, they still have a really good set of teeth on them. Yeah. And if you touch them, they will actually bite you to defend right. themselves. And it can and still it hurt. Will hurt. But what they won't do is go after you. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So we're coming through. Now we do have some other uh, snakes here which are venomous. This one here is actually called a Colette's. Oh wow, it's back there, okay. Yeah, this is actually found in um, uh, central Queensland. Quite attractive one, some of them hide away. We try and make them feel comfortable and safe in their environment. Yeah, it's a beautiful enclosure. They do. Some of them have some quite remarkable um, colours to them as well. Yeah. It's all their camouflage. It's a bit of a red, yeah. red browny tinge there. That's right, yeah. Beautiful. Now, um, just to back up a little bit, we do have some oh. other unusual creatures here as well. This uh, one day a kid said this, a, a, a young child was here in the zoo and he made this really funny comment. He said, this is a liquid snake. A liquid snake? Liquid snake. That's and a funny I, way I to love that. A snake, that is isn't terrific. It? So, um, in uh, the Christmas of 2019, we had a, uh, a venomous animal display which included uh, some marine animals. Uh, we had some uh, a blue ringed octopus wow. and a cone snail. And as part of the display, we actually had these. This is a snowflake eel, this one. And it's he was so popular color. that when the display ended, the snowflake's eel remained. Right. Because kids love seeing eels. They often yeah. think of them, eels and snakes, as being similar. Totally unrelated, of course. Yep. But they are still a very similar animal in their appearance. It's a liquid snake. It's a liquid right? snake. I love that. Now, speaking of liquid snakes, this one here actually is a land snake that moves onto water. And in fact, what we've got here for you, beautifully displayed here, is a water python. Wow. This one is a water python that's currently swimming and submerged. Wow. And on your stunning. right here is a water python in the exact same enclosure. So what they can do is they can actually move up, over, out of the exhibit, and into the next one beside oh, them. That is incredible. So if they want to bask and stay dry, they can actually come out and they can move around. 
they want to uh, bath themselves, they can head back over and into that tank. And that is a clever snake. Yeah. Now, what's amazing about this particular animal is when you take them out in the sun, they've got this beautiful rainbow shine to them. This is the rainbow serpent. And we believe that this could be the animal that has uh, uh, inspired some of the Aboriginal tales, the Absolutely. indigenous people yeah. stories of the rainbow serpent. Absolutely. So, because, or especially because they live around water and love to swim. Uh, which is also in, in the tales of the Rainbow Serpent. It so, is. Yeah, yeah. well, that's a great bit of trivia yeah. that I never knew, Pete. Thank you now, very much course, for sharing. Now, of course, when it comes to venomous, everybody wants to see the most dangerous snake in the world. Absolutely. And I'm afraid to tell you, I can't show it to you oh. because I don't have one. Oh. Yeah, the most dangerous snake in the world is the one that kills the most number of people. That's what makes it dangerous. Right, of course. Now, believe it or not, it actually happens to be a type of saw shell viper, which is actually found through parts of Africa and, and, and Asia. Now we here in Australia, in our reptile zoo, focus on native animals. Okay. What we do okay. have- Animals you is, can find in Australia. Correct. What we do have is the most venomous snake in the world. A lot of people get those two things confused. Right. Because this here is an inland taipan, and his venom is considered the most toxic venom of any land snake in the world. Wow. However though, he hasn't really killed that many people. All right. Because so it's hard to find. Correct. Right. He lives in a very, very remote part of Australia, and generally they don't come across people, so it's not something you need to really worry about. Right. Uh, however, though, they do have very toxic venom, but people get those two things confused. Right. If he's the most venomous, he must be the most dangerous, and that's not actually true. Right. So, so, but if you're in the wild and you happen to see one of these things, you want to be getting the other way pretty quickly. Well, actually, the best thing to do when you're faced by any snake at all right. is to stay where you are. Right. Stay calm Just and stay still. Stay calm and relaxed. Yep. Any movement at all is a threat to a snake. Um, these animals have um, reasonably good vision, but they're very slow to work out what they're looking at. And if you move, you're a threat. If you stand still, okay. you're not. It's and very they, basic. And are they quick, pretty quick? So they could, could they catch you if, if you tried to run away? It, uh, no, they probably can't actually. They're not, yeah. On land, they're not really that fast. Okay. And they don't tend to chase people. That's okay. a bit of a, an old wives tale or right. story that we tell. Yeah. But what they can do is strike really fast if they're close. Okay. Which is why you stop. So if you, if you freeze, assess the situation. Yeah. If the snake is far enough away from you that it's safe to move, you move quietly and slowly. Okay. And when you are a long distance from the land, you can run around and like run. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about dangerous and not, the coastal Taipan is not as venomous as the inland. Taipan, but they they are I guess more considered more dangerous in Australia because they live on the coast of Queensland. Okay. And they do tend to uh, people do tend to come across them more frequently than they would in inland Taipan, for example. Right. So um, there tend to be more encounters with this particular species. Okay. But really, it's not the one people worry about the most. I'm going to show you that one just. Yeah, I was going to say, what is the one that we probably need to worry about the most in Australia? Yeah, would you like me to take you over there and show you Please now? Please do. Okay, let's, do let's it. head on over this way. So we have a whole range of different types of snakes. We've got a few in here, but we're gonna head straight up to the back here. And we're actually going to take a look at probably one of the most common venomous snakes in Australia, the Eastern Brown snake. Eastern Brown. Eastern I Brown. heard about the Eastern Brown. Yeah, you would have. And I'm glad he's on that side <laughs> of the glass. Uh, we all are, we all are. Now, this particular animal here, like the rest of the animals here, is a captive bred animal. He's actually pretty calm. And if I was to open the door right now, he would probably move out onto the floor and move right past all of us and ignore us completely. Right. They are not an angry or aggressive animal. Like what they are general. is defensive. Right. So when you see one in the wild, they're afraid of you. And if you move and you are moved defensively, so if you yeah. go to hit them or touch them or you do something that looks threatening, they react to that. Right. So that's why it's so important when you come across these that you stay still. Okay. One of the reasons they have such a bad reputation is because there are so many of them. Right. And they're found right through the east coast of Australia, yeah, which means that uh, you know there's a lot of people living in these areas and you're more likely to come across them than any the other species. Okay. And as you can see from our display, we've got this set up like a kid's playground in a garden area, because that's where they're found. Typically just in, yeah, yeah. in those kind of places. But what you do need to realize about these guys is that venomous snakes in Australia kill less people than cows. But that is a very interesting <laughs> yeah. fact. Statistically speaking, um, there's only on average about four deaths by snake a year in Australia, wow. and about 27 deaths by cow. That so, is fascinating. Certainly yeah. something that people I don't run around knew. screaming and trying to hit cows over the head with a shovel. So we shouldn't do that to them either. No, we okay. shouldn't. We should yeah. just keep our distance from them. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. So. What um, else can we see? I did okay. see some, um, some yes, big, we do. a big, big python. Yes, you do, absolutely. We don't have a lot of exotic animals here. These are animals that come from overseas, that, but we do have a couple. This one's probably our most impressive. This one's Titan. That's huge. So Titan is actually our inland, uh, sorry, not, sorry. Titan is actually our Burmese python. He's come from another zoo. 
These are animals you certainly don't see in the wild here in Australia. Look at him, he but is But from that, your species can get pretty big too. Claudia, do you want to come over here for a moment? Now don't freak out, okay, but I got someone I want to introduce you to, okay? So come on over here. Look at this. So this here is actually oh. a uh, jungle carpet python. So this is one of our stunning. native species of pythons here in Australia. Wow. This beautiful creature right here is actually very calm and peaceful because this is a pet snake. Wow. Now, if this was wild, it would be no threat to you. It is not venomous. Right. But if it was wild and you were trying to touch it, it would probably still defend itself by biting. Right, okay. So, but at the moment, this guy's got no reason to bite because he doesn't see us as a threat and he doesn't see uh, you as food. That's because good. One, one good of the thing. greatest myths when we talk to children, we say, what animal do you think we have here that eats you? A lot of kids will say, snake. Right. And we go, well, that's really difficult because I want to show you something. Snakes <laughs> swallow their food whole and look, you don't fit inside their tummy, okay? <laughs> Do not fit. No way that you are gonna fit inside that stomach. And if they can't swallow you whole, then they're not gonna see you as food. Wow, well, yeah. that's the first time I've ever had a snake on my head. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a beautiful creature, isn't it? That's a fascinating feeling to, to feel it move through my hands and on my shoulders there. Yeah. yeah, they're very smooth, and when those muscles ripple down their body, it's actually quite a very soothing, rhythmic it's like feeling. It's a back massage yeah. right now, actually. I yeah. like that. So um, he's he's, uh, so, he's not going to crawl off and, and fall, is he? Oh, no, no, he's okay. <laughs> they usually hang on with their tail. So a lot of people will panic because a snake will wrap its tail and they'll go, squeezing me. Yeah. You don't need to worry about that. They're not squeezing, they're actually holding it. Yeah, okay. Um, so even people who are afraid of snakes when they visit us here at the Red Pell Zoo, we still encourage them not to hold the animals. We actually don't let people hold the animals very often. Right. But we do allow people to touch them. Okay. So when you come, we'll have a volunteer like uh, Claudia was just then. Right. Or a staff member um, to, to hold the animals so you can actually touch them and see what they yeah, feel like. Um, because it is a great way of getting over a fear of an animal that you really don't have to be afraid of if you leave them alone. Right? Yeah. yeah. They also do a fantastic job in Australia of removing a lot of animals that are pest species. Yes, so they okay. eat all the wild rabbits and wild rats and animals you don't think about. Flying foxes and possums, they also they breed in well. large numbers. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so they're great at getting rid of animals like that as well. And That's what's true. this one's name? Okay, so this one here we call Tigger. Tigger. So Tigger is a jungle python, so he looks a bit like a tiger with all those stripes yeah. on him. Yeah. But he is... Stunning uh, looking is, animal. He is an absolutely beautiful creature. Oh, wow. So he's one of the, believe it or not, he's actually one of the nine pythons we use for people to come in here and touch here in the zoo. There you go. The reason we have so many is each day the animal, they only get to work one day a week, so these guys are luckier than us. Uh, each day <laughs> we a bring a different animal and let people come and see what they feel like. Yeah, mm. awesome. Yeah, wow, it's lovely to meet you, Tigger. Yeah. So, beautiful, beautiful spend snake. the rest of your day probably going around and showing you all the other animals we have. We've got a lot of different types of snakes here. So when people come out and visit, you, you can t spend your time and go around and we have we have the, the king brown snakes, we have uh, more carpet pythons in jungles, we have red-bellied black snakes. Wow. So many different types of Australian species that you can come and see safely behind glass. And, awesome. and a few species that you be. can get close to. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Well, so, I have had yeah. an absolute ball. It's such a treat to be taken through uh, this place by yourself, by you. Um, thank you so much for sharing okay. so much of your well, knowledge and hopefully the kids have got a lot out of it. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, kids, I hope you've loved it. Yeah. You know where to come if you want to meet some of these animals and yeah. hopefully get the chance to touch some. We'll see you in our next video, kids, and until then, stay keen. If you haven't already, make sure you get a grown up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon, kids. And until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right, stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of